Hey everyone, I'm Zenith Priest, and welcome to my introduction to River Searches in Sunlight, where I will give you an insight into the nature of the spirit and show you how to drive out the invaders by turn 5. Looking at the overview panel, we see River has lots of control while contributing some offense and utility. The playstyle suggests a preference for pushing invaders out of lands where they would otherwise be a problem, augmented with a touch of direct damage. Their special rule, River's Domain, counts any of our presence in wetlands as a sacred site. This makes it easier to use and keep the wetlands as a base of power and gives us some versatility when choosing power cards. River's growth options are fairly straightforward. The middle option will be the most used as it allows more presence to come off the board and lets us reach for the next wetlands or set up a trade with River's Bounty, which I'll go over shortly. We can also establish a sacred site off the wetlands if necessary. The Presence Tracks offers a gradual increase for both energy and presence, with a reclaim option halfway through the card track. Even though it's only a single card, we'll want to reach for this by turn 2 to unlock the second tier on our innate power, Massive Flooding. This power starts off small, letting us target a land close to a sacred site to stop a build or protect a land from ravaging by respectively pushing an explorer or town. Then it starts doing damage with the final tier dealing 2 damage to all invaders. For our unique powers, Boon of Vigor grants energy to any spirit, equal to the number of cards they played if you pick an ally. You can play this on yourself if you need to, but more often you'll get better value as a team by targeting a different spirit. Flash Floods is a fast effect that deals 1 or 2 damage depending on whether you target an inland or coastal land. Good for stopping a build, but better if you allow the coast to build and then take out the town. River's Bounty is a power I mentioned earlier. It allows you to gather up to 2 Dahan and will often add an extra Dahan. Those 3 Dahan clears a newly settled land but the drawback is that the land will blight and must have a presence where you want to gather. Wash Away has the powerful effect of pushing up to three non-city invaders. Entrenched lands become much easier to handle, and newly established lands are simply, well, washed away. All of our powers have limited range, and while only our innate power needs a sacred site, we'll be able to use it every turn, so make sure to have one nearby. Note that any two of our cards will activate our innate power, and any three will activate the second tier. This is why we want to reach for that reclaim option to play three cards on the second turn. As a control spirit, it's important to use our resources as efficiently as possible, and realize that everything is a resource, not just our cards and energy. Even our presence and the blight on the card can be used or sacrificed to ensure the progression of our goals. River Surges in Sunlight uses control to channel the invaders to a single land where the final tier of massive flooding can have maximum effect. Keep that in mind as we proceed now to the demo game. As a low complexity spirit, I'll be using the power progression deck and disabling the branch and claw expansion to simplify our decisions during play. All right, let's begin. Turn one. When thinking about your plan with River Surges in Sunlight, asking a few questions will help make decisions a little easier. Will you need to play Flash Floods? Can you afford to trade? If you are setting up a trade, do you have enough to Han to clear that land? With this game as our example, the invaders have explored into the jungles. We won't need Flash Floods, preferring to use it on the lower jungle next turn. With the game just starting, we can't afford to trade. So we play River's Bounty to draw Dahan into the higher jungle. With a city, town, and an explorer, we'll need Wash Away to allow the Dahan to clear the land because massive flooding will not be enough. Now that we have a plan, let's choose a second growth option, taking both presents from the card plays. One to go into the higher jungles to make use of River's Bounty, and the other one in the coastal mountain to reach the other wetlands next turn. After playing the cards we determined earlier, we proceed. 
Note that while we could have placed our presence in the sands instead of the mountains, the mountains are better for trading than in a place that will cascade when blighted. The slow phase lets us wash away the jungle invaders into the mountain, since we'd rather have a city built there than in our wetlands. That leaves just a city in the upper jungle, which Three Tahan can take care of once we gather them in from the higher sands. Also cause massive flooding in those sands to push that explorer and prevent the build. Turn 2. With flash floods dedicated to protecting the jungles, we more or less have this turn mapped out for us. First, let's place our presence using the second growth option, with the first one going into land 2 to solidify our reach with sacred sites. The second one can go anywhere, but with only wetlands or mountains exploring later this turn, let's put the other presence in the higher mountains in case we need to trade there. We now have the option to reclaim, and River's Bounty is the only card we'll have energy for. Playing them all, we proceed. Grant your ally the Boon of Vigor, as you shouldn't need it next turn. Subject the jungle to flash floods, then we watch the invaders proceed, ravaging the jungles with the Dahan clearing them out in turn. After building in the lower sands, they then explore into the mountains. Since we have River's Bounty available, we lower the Dahan into the upper mountains, and now that we've unlocked the second tier of our innate power, Massive flooding will destroy the town and clear the lower sands. Turn 3. With no cards in hand, we reclaim, gaining access to uncanny melting. Targeting one away from a sacred site, this power grants a fear if invaders are present and clears a blight if you target sands or wetlands. If you're not using the power progression, sun and water are extremely valuable but any power with water will be a close second. With the sands already clear, we won't need flash floods, and we already have enough energy, so let's select the other three powers. Wash away to clear one of the next explorers, uncanny melting to grant some fear, and river's bounty to gather to Han into the coastal mountain. With no fast powers, we reveal an earned fear card. Once they've dealt with that, the invaders continue. With nothing to ravage, the invaders build into the mountains before exploring into the jungles. For our part, we proceed as planned. Push the invaders from the upper jungle into the wetlands. Use uncanny melting to generate fear. If we were in danger of blighting the island, we clean up the sands, but in general go for the next fear card. River's Bounty will gather Dahan into the coastal mountain. And finally, we destroy the town in the upper mountain and push what we can into the wetlands. Turn 4. Looks like we'll have the upper side of the board clear after the Ravage, so this turn will be dedicated to consolidating what we can and making sure no stragglers are allowed to build inland. Let's choose the middle option again this time pulling from the energy track, placing it in the coastal jungle, then opening up our fourth card play, placing the presence into the blighted sands. The placement isn't critical this turn because we have sacred sites in all the wetlands and we're not looking to set up any trades, so check on your allies to see if they can use your influence. Any of our reclaim options can be useful and there's a valid argument for each of them. Personally, I like to get extra Dahan when I have the space, so let's reclaim River's Bounty and play the rest of our cards. With enough energy in reserve, Boon of Vigor should still be going to an ally spirit. Flash Floods takes out the coastal town before we proceed to the invader phase. Here, they ravage the mountains, successfully blighting the upper lands before the Dahan take out the city. They also build in the coastal jungle before exploring into the mountains again. In a longer game, we could afford to play with flash floods a bit, tagging the jungles next turn, and then the mountains the turn after. But because we're in the end game, 
Let's use massive flooding to clear the jungle. And since we won't need the Dahan there, we can pull them into the wetlands with River's Bounty. Turn 5. With no cards in hand, we reclaim again, gaining Nature's Resilience, which grants 6 defense to a land close to a sacred site, or it could remove a blight if there's enough water available. Without the power progression, you should have enough energy to reach for a major power here if you want. Even giving your allies Boon of Vigor, you'll still have 6 energy to play with. If the power you pick is cheap enough, you might still be able to play 4 cards and trigger the last effect of massive flooding. But even without a major power, we're still in good position to clear the buildings left, triggering Terra Level 2 as we do. Because we don't need to defend with Nature's Resilience, and have no need for more energy via Boon of Vigor, we'll play the other four cards and move to the Fast Phase. Since Massive Flooding only deals 2 damage to invaders, we'll need Flash Floods to chip at the city in order to destroy it later on. Our Fear card causes the invaders to retreat, pushing the invaders out of Land 5. One should be pushed into the Blighted Sands to get more value out of Uncanny Melting, and the other could follow or go into the coast. The invaders continue by building that coastal town, and then venturing into the sands. From here, we want to wash away the coastal mountain town into Land 2. Uncanny Melting and River's Bounty are optional, making the island look cleaner and adding an extra to Han before massive flooding takes out the remaining buildings. Some final thoughts on river surges in sunlight. It's okay to let the invaders build. River has the tools like flash floods or massive flooding to deal with buildings directly, can push towns out with wash away, or even set up a trade with river's bounty. Keep a pathway open to terror level two. With the sequence I'm presenting here, you won't always need it, but if you prevent too many builds, you'll find yourself falling short and having to deal with straggling explorers. The last growth option often feels like a trap in the early game. If the game does proceed past turn 5, that is prime territory for this option, as it's no longer critical to place two presents when you get the chance, and you will have a decent amount of energy to work with. Alright everyone, that's all I've got this time. Hope you gained some insight, and good luck in your next games.